I'm 3990 and this is Hades Star Basics. Back at it, level 45, spent a lot of time upgrading planets. These two are level 15 and the other three are level 14. My system produces about 20,000 credits every 12 hours. Here I'm running shipments, delivering a bit over 18,000 and getting 19,706 credits back. This extra bit is the shipment computer module, adding its 8% bonus to the delivery value. The process took about 6 minutes to complete with time modulator on. The red star scanner was upgraded to level 4. The blue star scanner has been unlocked. And two additional short range scanners were placed in preparation for expansion. My fleet remains about the same. I have some research darts from the last red star ready to be opened. I'll get a red star going to first consume some hydrogen before opening them up. The four artifacts added about 13,000 credits and 3,000 hydro to my economy. So between shipments and artifact research, that's 33,000 credits income every 12 hours if I keep up with the routine. Lately, hydrogen has been hard to get rid of, and we'll watch as this changes as I start to expand. Red Star 4s introduce a new enemy ship type, the Interceptor. 8,000 hull and can do 90 damage per second on multiple targets. It travels a little quicker than other ships and can leave its own sector once it's been activated by simply entering its sector or getting within its weapon range. After that, it'll waypoint to the closest ship's location or waypoint. Here's an example. To clear this sector, these two battleships have waypointed to this rock, which is just a little bit farther away from the interceptor than these three miners. By the time the player reacts, it's too late and the enemy ship will go on to kill two more of his transports. Here, I make the same mistake, losing my two battleships as well as the miner here. Then I have to move my transports to elude the interceptor, as it'll continue hunting down my ships all across the map until they or it are destroyed. Keep in mind that interceptors only attack players that have activated them. Here, a player set off this interceptor after attempting to destroy it, but we can see my transport safely passing within its weapon range. As long as I don't engage it with weapons or pass through its initial sector, my squishies will be just fine. To minimize losses from interceptors, you can warp battleships in first, clear a path, and disable the bad guys before bringing in the rest of the fleet to retrieve artifacts and mine hydrogen. Aside from this new ship type, you'll still encounter guardians and sentinels like in previous Red Stars. Red Star 4 artifacts offer pretty good rewards at around 3 to 5,000 credits and 4 to 800 hydrogen per research art. For salvage, you'll get 1,200 credits and 120 hydrogen per. This level also offers hydro rich sectors, usually containing an interceptor and a couple other ships. They have 6 rocks, totaling 800 hydro, which can be mined quickly with remote mining and mining boost. I remember spending a lot of time at Red Star 4 on my main account because the salvage and research rewards couple well with expansion within my yellow star. I'm searching for a blue star with the relocated blue star scanner. I'm not going to get too deep into these, but essentially you're trying to be the last man standing. At this level I encountered primarily lone battleships, which are computer controlled enemy ships. This is likely because I'm being matched based off of my battleship level. But like all things in Hades Star, progression equals more challenging scenarios, so as I level up, these will get more difficult. Here's a quick look at a blue star as seen on my main account. I find the best way to win at this early level is by avoiding combat as much as possible, while staying within the closing circle. Winning a blue star will give you back the cost of your ship, some hydrogen, as well as fragments to place on the leaderboard, and also to power the shipment relay station. Losing results in a refund of 90% of your ship's value and some hydrogen. You can also run blue stars with the sanctuary module equipped, whereby only hydrogen would be awarded. Have a look at the scanner itself, or the Hades Star Wiki for full info on this station. Now I have 5 transports with 5 slots each, running shipments between 7 planets and 2 trade stations. I'll make 34,544 and it'll cost me 8,370 hydrogen compared to the much shorter, less hydro intensive, but less profitable results before expansion. It's taking about 17 minutes now to complete shipments. I think this is around the time when some new players might throw in the towel, thinking that this is simply how the game plays out, actions taking longer and requiring more user interaction. And while that is true to some extent, it's definitely possible to plan accordingly to make things progress easier and faster. It's definitely possible to over-upgrade modules and ships to put myself into a hydro deficit. These possibilities are what make the game interesting to me, the fact that I can make mistakes that affect my ability to progress smoothly. 
Example, if I should choose to upgrade my transports to level 3 with cargo bay extension level 3 while neglecting my ability to consume and hold enough hydrogen, we'll see that I'll likely end up in a situation where I eventually can't afford to move my ships and use hydrogen as much as I need to. Likewise, if I spend all of my time upgrading miners while avoiding planet upgrades, combat-related stuff, and economy-related mods and ships, I'll have an abundance of hydrogen without the ability to effectively use it. These values are always in flux throughout progression, and need to be considered regularly. That being said, I'd like to make everything take less time, use less hydro, and make more credits. A good place to start would be to increase the slots on my transports, so I'll upgrade my transports, allowing me to carry more within my yellow star, and I'll also be able to hold two level 4 artifacts at a time for red stars. So because of this, my hydrogen usage will increase, so I'll also make improvements to mining boost and remote mining as well. I'll upgrade the shipyard again, which opens up two more slots for ships, at least one of which will be used for a second miner. Not sure yet if I'll use the 10th slot for a 6th transport or perhaps even a 3rd miner. I'm building a single warp lane for 50k, and I'll start using these close by planets as hubs. That is, storage for shipments destined to other planets. This way I can maximize the amount that I carry when traveling to planets and bring back full loads as well. Each planet can hold double its listed capacity, so I can bring everything here before dispersing them outwards to their destinations. More info on this in older videos. I've built the Diplomacy Station. This space station allows you to connect your system with another player. You or they can then travel back and forth between the two systems to mine hydrogen, complete shipments, or as we see here, help to clear sectors. Another use for a Diplo partner is for artifact trading. I can send a couple transports into their system to retrieve artifacts stored on their planets. This is of course limited by the cargo slots I have on my own transports, but I can hold 8 so I can get up to a level 6 artifact each time. I can only get artifacts from other players, I'm not able to put arts onto their planets. Diplomacy can be ended at any time, and any ships still in the system when it ends will be teleported back to their home system. There's actually an artifact trading discord where prices are posted for various levels of higher artifacts. Right now, 5.5 level 4 artifacts could get me one level 9 artifact. That is, if I had the space to hold it. Anyway, once an agreement has been made, diplomacy stations get linked and the exchange can occur. These higher level artifacts give greater rewards and new module blueprints, something that can have a huge impact on early gameplay. I'll grab up a couple level 6 artifacts from my main account and get them researching. I'm going to try to find a corporation to join. There's many ways to go about doing this. There's a recruitment thread on Reddit, there's one on Discord, but I'm just gonna throw it out there in the Galaxy chat and see what happens. A guy from Cube Tech has responded right away. This is a corporation that's part of a bigger alliance of five corporations. I'll be placed into Cube Tech Purple, which is like an academy corporation for learning about red stars and white stars, also artifact trading to help people level up. Once I get to Red Star 5, I'll move up to Cube Tech Blue, RS7, Cube Tech Yellow. There's many corporations out there that offer a similar structure, and if you ask most anyone in the Hades Star community for a good piece of advice, they'll likely say to find a good corp. So we'll see how this plays out in the next video, but I want to point out that I've still been sticking to those same modules referenced in the last video. They've still been effective, and even with Battleship Level 1, I'm managing to get through Red Star 4s without much trouble. I have unlocked EMP because I'm aware of the new ship type I'll be facing in Red Star 5, but there hasn't been any need for me to unlock much else yet. Like I said, Red Star 4 is a great time to focus on your own economy, level those planets, level up mods, open up some new sectors, and find a decent corporation before moving forward. I've been uploading these videos every two weeks, but I'm going to take a bit of a pause until the next one. I've been slacking a bit on my main account and want to catch up there. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, you know what you can do. Thanks for watching.